up, paper up, higher. Get that floor clean. I want to see my face in those shoes, and if I see one bit of fluff on that jacket, you're never going to see your mum and dad again, you little... What? Oh! Good evening. Welcome to uh, Games Master and um, Kiss. <laughs> Don't you just love them? Always insisting that they, they lend a hand. Look, it's for the last time. You don't have to help. Sit down. <sighs> Bless him. Hey, coming up on today's show, we've got the grand final of our footy tournament. But first, we're going to see these lovable rap scallions in action in an event we call Four Ninja Kids. <laughs> It's been a long time since I was a kid, and I'm afraid to say I had a rather unhappy childhood. But things have changed since then, and kids these days have plenty of one-on-one -on -one beat -em up action to relieve their infant anxieties. I decided to celebrate this happy state of affairs by holding an event on Virtua Fighter Kids on the Sega Saturn, involving four pint-sized pugilists. Let the kiddie combat commence. And so here are the four urchins that, uh, whose company we have the pleasure of today. We have Michael, Alex, Jim, Bob and Christopher. Michael, first of all, now, you're a very kind, a very generous soul. You once uh, helped out your auntie's pony. Didn't you? What, what was the score with the pony? Well, it didn't, but it was very ill and after a while it, it, it had to be put down because it, it, um, it wouldn't last it much longer anyway. Right. So you helped it? Yeah. And then it died? Yeah. It happens, uh, but it was a good attempt, a valiant attempt. Michael, um, right, Alex, it's going to you, Man United fan, your favourite player is? Karl Poborski. Why do you like Karl Poborski? Because he's fast. Right. Good hair? Do you like his hair? Mm, not really. No, it's a bit long, a bit lank, a bit greasy. Okay, Jim Bob, now you like uh, Power Rangers? Who's your favourite Power Ranger? Um, White Ranger. Why? Because he's cool. Because he's cool? Right, why is he cool? It's just one of those indefinable things, coolness, isn't it? And finally, Christopher, uh, it's funny, you reckon you're the coolest person in the world, don't you? Yeah, because I'm good, I'm good, and especially good at um, racing ones. Right, you're the coolest because you're good at games. Yeah. It's funny, because there was an article in the Face magazine saying the same thing about you there. OK, we're going to have two semi-finals followed by a final and Jim Bob and Christopher are going to be first up while we have a bums on seat type situation. Let's take a look at today's news. After Virtua Fighter 1, 2, 3 Remix and Kids, Sega have come up with a new spin on their favourite money-making clan. Fighter's Mega Mix, which sounds like a dodgy Christmas album, is out in February on the Saturn, featuring the Virtua Fighter characters against Raxel and Co. from Sega's other beat-em-up hit, Fighting Vipers. All the characters have been given new moves, but nothing's been done about their cack hair. There were a lot of things in Star Wars that bothered me a great deal. That's why there's a CD-ROM out about the making of the new Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition films out next March. Making Magic contains previews of the new scenes currently being inserted into the classic movies, like Han Solo meeting Jabba the Hutt, who still looks like a lump of poo. Ever wonder what it's like to be in a black car sliding down a slippery slope? Of course you have! Well, hordes of Japanese people are quite literally finding out thanks to the Ice Ride, the latest movie you can watch while being thrown around inside a motion simulator. It's invaluable help to those who like to do this kind of thing in real life. Welcome back. We're about to begin our event for Ninja Kids, uh, so-called because we have a four kids and they're about to uh, quite literally beat each other up on Virtual Fighter Kids. We've got James and Chris who are first up and trying to outdo me in the fashion sticks once more is Derek Lynch from Namco. Welcome, Derek. <laughs> Thank Derek, you. tell us a bit about the first two characters we're going to see fighting. Well, we'll see James, Jim Bob. Yeah, Jim, Jim Bob will be using Akira, and we can look for short, sharp, powerful, dashing moves from Akira. And Chris, he's using Lao, and he'll be using palm. He's the genuine palm techniques and low sweeps. And That's combos. it, palm yeah. techniques, yeah. as we've all done in the wee small hours. <laughs> OK, uh, best of luck, guys, then. It's a uh, best of three bite situation. Whoever wins two of them will go on to the final. Off you go. OK, Jim Bob is Akira in the white headband and Chris is Lau with the moustache and the ponytail. Akira's getting a bit of a thumping, Derek. Yes, you'll see, by Lau's double punch and then a sweep. But he's coming back a bit now, Akira. That's right. 
Okay, he's got, he's got a big jump on him, a couple of blows to the stomach. Oh, but he comes back, and the low, he takes the first one. That's 1-0 to Chris. Okay, so we go into the second bout now, a bout that James must win. What would you like to see from Akira now? Dashing elbow. Oh, Ooh, me! Went, went for the knee, that was a good one. He's got low on the floor, a nice little it's jump into his abdomen there. This is much better from Akira this time. But Lau's starting to fight back now, he's jumping on him again. Down. Getting down, they're about level now, Derek. Oh, Akira's taking right. a thumping now, Derek. It could be it, it's all over, yes, it's all over. Lau <laughs> stomps on his stomach, Chris takes it 2-0. So James is out, Chris goes on to the final, please, and make way for Alex and Michael. Okay, now, Derek, uh, Alex is playing uh, Sean, the uh, old drunken master in this one. Tell us a bit about him. Well, Sean uses the classic drunken master technique, very sleepy, behaves as if he's drunk. Uh -huh. And so that like, way... Like we both do at times. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, de deceiving, completely deceiving the opponent. And what about uh, Michael? He's playing cage. Well, Michael playing cage, ninjutsu. Very fast, very tricky, from the ancient arts of... Of... It's so ancient, <laughs> we don't even know the name. <laughs> Uh, okay, Ninjutsu. best of best luck, Ninjutsu. Best of luck, Alex. Best of luck, Michael. Once again, uh, best of three bouts. Whoever gets the two, first of all, will join Chris in the final. Off you go. Okay, so Alex is the old drunken master. He's the guy with the beard. Michael is Cage, who is the blue ninja. That's a good start by Michael yep. as the blue ninja there, Derek. That's right, with the, the stomach jump there. But Takes his energy. Cage, oh, I thought he was coming oh. back in there, but no, it's it, it's all over again, another quick round, Michael, it takes the first one, so uh, we definitely need Alex to come back here, he obviously um, wasn't being deceptive enough for Sean in that first one. That's right, the speed of Cage. Uh, the speed Cage. of Cage, one out in the end, okay, we go for the second bite, you can see the energy bars at the top of the screen, yeah. it's a better start though by yeah. Alex this time, Cage's energy is down, but he's got that little belly stomp again. Yeah. Okay, if we look at the energy bars again, Sean's taking a bit of a pound and this could be all oh. over for him. He's come up with a leg sweep though, Derek. <laughs> Great leg sweep there. A little, a little drink, you see a little drink there? <laughs> <laughs> to revitalise him, but it didn't revitalise him enough. The energy bars are very close, but so Michael takes the second one. So at the end of a very, very close bout there, Michael uh, takes the game 2-0. He's going to go on to meet Chris in the final. While they get ready for that and while Derek and I try to work out what exactly the name of that ancient ninja art was, we'll go to today's <laughs> reviews. <laughs> Like many celebrities who can't be named for legal reasons, these games are all out now. And as a curtain raiser for our 50 final, it's FIFA 97. The presentation throughout is fantastic. The FMV sequence that starts the game is absolutely awesome. First, you've got John Motson, Andy Gray, and Des Lynham this time providing the commentary. Plus, David Ginola was motion captured. In my opinion, the indoor five-a-side mode is the only thing in FIFA 97 that's better than in the previous versions. The playability is worse. It's gone absolutely loony. This is far better than the previous FIFA games. The motion capture actually increases the gameplay and makes it that much more realistic. So I'd buy it. Oh no, he's put the ball in his own goal. Oh, not an own goal. If we'd reviewed NBA Jam Extreme a couple of years ago, I would have made lots of jokes about kissing the rim, but I'm a lot more mature now. The main differences between NBA Jam Extreme and the previous games, firstly, it's in 3D. Secondly, you've got over 100 secret characters, over 30 new dunks, most of them activated with the new Extreme button. The secrets are absolutely crazy. Firstly, you can have big heads. Other secrets include the dribble demo, where basically your player dribbles fantastically through his legs and round his back. Finally, you can change the ball into a gigantic beach ball that bounces around, and if that fits in the basket, God knows. NBA Jam Extreme's just taken over from it. It's still four-player, you've got the new graphics, and loads of crazy secrets, and it's still fast, good fun. Virtua On was supposed to be a tribute to the classic BBC children's series Vision On, but the programmers couldn't spell. Each robot's got two long-range weapons and a close-range weapon, as well as special attacks. They've also got jetpacks on their back, letting them fly up into the air and attack from above. And the split-screen two-player mode's fantastic, and I highly recommend you have a go. The boxes on the landscape that you can hide behind become transparent when your opponent's on the other side, allowing you to see them and shoot them. I'm not sure whether I like this game, I think I do, but I think it's in a case where it's beat him up, not beat him up, beat him up, not beat him up. 
Want more information on the games? Got a modem? Hey, check our webpage. Okay, at the start of the show, we had four tiny kids, and now there are only two competing to be the winner of our Fort Ninja Kids event. So we have uh, Chris and Michael who've made it through to the final. Best of luck, guys. It's uh, once again the best of three. Whoever wins two bites will walk away with the golden joystick. Best of luck, guys. Off you go. Okay, so Chris once again is playing at Lau, who's the guy with a moustache and a ponytail. Michael is Cage is in the blue ninja pajamas. That's a nice little throwing move there from the ninja. That's right. That's one of his special techniques, his short, 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 sharp throws. Okay, we're looking at the energy bars at the top. We can see it's quite even just there, but he could get a ring out there, oh, Derek. ring out. He has. He's kicked him out of the ring. That means it doesn't matter what his energy is like. Now, first bout, it goes to Chris. Okay, here we go for the second bout. Michael must win that. So what would we be looking for from the Blue Ninja here, Derek? We'd like to see more combos. Oh, a beautiful throw there. Oh, I love oh, that. Triple look at throw. That. Top door right. action there, followed by a kick in the neck. Very, very nice. Oh, and another one. Such a young man. He's got the throws again there, Derek. Are they difficult to pull off or are they quite Very right? difficult. This, these guys are obviously very skilled. Okay, so we can see the energy bars. Lau's come back a bit, but his energy is missing. That's some nice short, sharp punches there. But Lau could get another ring out here, Derek. Oh no, he's managed to ninja okay, okay. switch it. He's getting the throws and again there. Oh. This could tie it up. Michael coming back brilliantly, but no, and then Lau's back again. But the time runs out. If we look at the energy bars, and Lau's is the weakest, which means Michael as Cage has tied it. What a piece. Okay, here we go to the final deciding bout here then. Just to remind you, Chris is playing loud, the guy with the moustache and the ponytail. Michael is Cage, the blue ninja. Again, we've got the throws Look from Michael throws. here. He is pulling out throws like sliced bread, I don't know. Throws like <laughs> sliced bread, and you won't, even, you won't find phrases like that on any other show. Okay, now it's uh, it's the blue ninja who's making all the running again. Lau's energy bars is very low. Michael looks like he can tie it up, he has. And so with just over 12 seconds of the final bout remaining, Michael is the winner. Okay, nice one there, Michael. Uh, let's talk to the losers first of all. Starting with Chris, let's have a, a very brief excuse for losing from all of you. Well, we kept on doing too many rolling, and I don't know how to do it. Okay, fine, let's move on. Jim Bob? Well, um, he keeps not doing too many punches and too many kickies and they uh -huh. keep too many throws and things. Right, and Alex, your excuse? Um, he was totally drunk. Right, your guy, you were playing. With mm -hmm. Well, that's the best excuse, actually, and a lot of uh, men, a lot older than you, have used that excuse for many things in life. Um, Michael, let's go on to you. Talk us about some of the tactics that you used to win. Well, because I won all, nearly all the things that I was practicing and I won it because I was doing lots of punching, lots of throw, throws and uh -huh. when he was down I keep jumping up and kicking yeah. him and punching him in the face. Maybe a technique you could have used on your auntie's pony. That might have, <laughs> you know, it might, might still be here today. You never know. Um, but you can console yourself, Michael, with the fact that the winner of our Four Ninja Kid event, walking home with the golden joystick tonight, is Michael! <laughs> Okay, while well, we sweep away the broken dreams of three poor prepubescents, uh, we will head towards a commercial break. Coming up in part two, our grand final of our footy tournament. <laughs> Welcome back to Games Master, and we are quite literally in a... We're about to start our grand footy final. Let's go for the Games Master for a final tip type situation. What? Oh, hello. What are you waiting for? Get on with it. Okay, so please welcome our two finalists, not only competing for Cup Final Glory, but also getting the chance, more importantly, to shake my hand once again. Chris Armstrong and Richard Rufus. <laughs> welcome back, Chris. Welcome back, Richard. Now, Chris, it was only last week uh, that we saw you. A very tight game against our veteran Rick Henderson. Edged them out 1-0 with a beautiful lob. What kind of game are we going to see from you tonight? I think more of the same. A uh, bit defensive. Just keep it tight at the back and hopefully hit them on the break. Um, you know, one goal, one nil will be enough. All right then, Richard. Now, uh, in your game, it went the penalties against Michael Dubra. You edged them out there 4-3. Are you going to be playing for a draw and hoping to rely on your temperament under pressure again? 
No, this time I'm going to go for it straight off and look, looking to get a good result and hopefully beat Chris. Okay, Chris and Richard, would you like to assume your games playing positions? And I'll go up to the commentary box. Okay, he's older, he's wiser, he's more experienced, but he doesn't quite have that Scottish lilt that women find so attractive. <laughs> Jim Rosenthal, <laughs> co-commentating on the final with me. Jim, now you've seen both the previous semis, who would you pick as your favourite? I think Richard has showed fantastic temperament in that mm -hmm. penalty shootout, and his team came from behind in his game. Chris, plenty of flair, but he's missed so many chances, isn't he? So just narrowly, I might just go with Richard's temperament in the final. Okay, let's go to kick off. Okay, yes, Richard Rubens in the hole and changed strip, of course, to avoid that clash with the Brazilian goal. It's Brazil. Chris Armstrong on the attack first, Jim. Will he try a chip here or will he blast? It's a great chance. He's turned away. I don't believe what I'm seeing here. Uh, he might be trying to get the it's distance right. It's real arrogance. Right. Well, he might have been trying to get the distance right for that chip there, Jim. But what a very unusual piece of play to turn away <laughs> and do a figure of eight and try a chip from there. <laughs> it was the Tobel and Dean school of attacking there. But now, oh, goodness! Richard Rufus, as you were wittering there a bit, he was in the penalty area. <laughs> which I is was, the first rule you learn, don't talk when they're in the penalty area. I was there just trying are. to make sure that I said goodness and not something else there, Jim. <laughs> well, okay, Richard Rivers on the attack. No, it's not because he's been dispossessed. There's no Brazil on the attack. Well, they're giving the ball away, aren't they? Like, like a present really to each other. But um, uh, Holland going back towards his own goal and a lovely little clearance that one by Richard. Very neat piece of play and I think they're going to play the neat passing game here of the Dutch and they're in on goal. This he's in on good. goal. What a great chance this is for Richard. What's he going to do with it? Is he going to score? Oh, yes! yes! He was so calm there, Jim, wasn't he? He just bided his time, and literally took it around the keeper almost. This is a great piece of individual play by Richard. Definitely the best goal we've seen in the competition. OK, so Chris playing catch-up, playing Brazil, playing up the pitch now. We want to see Chris pulling out, but he's going to have to get in the position to try those little chips of his, Jim. Well, he's going to... I think, actually, he'll be better off taking route one to goal and try and drill a few. Because the, the goalkeeper was right, I was boxing, that yeah. was a... Very headstrong keeper there, a bit grobble Irish. But it worked. And as I was saying, I think Chris should really try and fire a few shots on goal as opposed to those dramatic and romantic chips that haven't really worked for him so far in this final. OK, here he comes again. He is in the Dutch box. He goes for it, but it's no problem for the keeper there, Jim. Well, he drilled that one, didn't he? But this keeper, this Dutch keeper, has been playing superbly. So it's Holland. It's a long ball up there. They're going for route one, Jim. Yep, not like Holland that one really, but lumping up the field and it's coming to, to nothing. And here oh, come the Brazilians. It's a clear run on goal, ball. is it? It's a clear run on goal for the Brazilians and a great equalising chance here. He's gone for the chip again. Oh, it's just in the crossbar now. That's the closest Chris Armstrong's got so far, Jim. He was in position finally for the chip. Chips with everything. <laughs> and now it's Holland. It's Richard Rivers on the attack. Is Chris going to be punished on the counter attack now? He goes for the shot. It's in there. He's caught, it's the sucker punch, 2-0 to Richard Rivers, a great breakaway goal, Jim. A wonderful breakaway goal, and Richard really rubbing the salt in there. OK, now it's here. Uh, we have gone about two-thirds through the time. Chris Armstrong has really got to pull something out of the bag here. He's had a couple of shots, but nothing remotely close to piercing the onion bag, Jim. No, absolutely not, and it's uh, a bit of a decision to be made by uh, Richard as he attacks and goes to the third goal that would kill this final off, surely. A great opportunity, oh, and he's done it. You've got to put the keeper in fall there, Jim. It seemed to go right through his hands. Well, I'm not sure. It was one-on-one, -on -one, though, wasn't it? And the goalkeeper left dreadfully exposed, and Holland really running away with this final. And would you believe it? The Brazilians absolutely nowhere. No defenders there at all, Dominic, and that's 3-0, and this final is over. We need a goal now from Chris Armstrong, Jim. Well, I think they deserve a goal, because they've had a lot of great attacking opportunities, and will they get a consolation score He's here? Oh, that's it from the outside of the boot there. A lovely little carving shot, but it wasn't good enough to beat the keeper. It's got it for the corner, though. Here it comes a high ball into the box. They come up for it. Oh, great save by the rebound. Chris Armstrong pulls one back, 3 1. Are we going to see a fight back here now, Jim? Well, you can never ride off the Brazilians, can you? And they deserved it. They got it from a set piece. Good piece of play inside the penalty area. Got the luck from the rebound and smashed it in for 3 1. OK then, time-wise we are literally in the last couple of minutes though, the very last seconds taken away there. That's it, the referee has blown his whistle, that's the end of the Games Master Football Tournament Final. A great game, uh, Richard Rivers winning 3-1. Well, uh, congratulations Richard, I'll start with you though Chris. You had a lot of shots on goal. 
But they weren't really going anywhere. Why was that? What was happening? I don't know. Uh, not too happy with my team's performance. Um, I think it's more okay. Maybe you personally leaving your shooting boots at home. I think I'd like to see the centre forward tested, to tell you yeah. the truth. <laughs> it was, uh, was a bit strange. But the one goal that you did get was a, was a bit of a cracker, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't bad. I've been working on the, the lobs earlier on and been working in training, but mm -hmm. just didn't come off today. Well, yours did, Richard. Out of all your three goals, which would be the pick of them? I think it'll have to be the chip, of course. It got me into the final and I scored again in the final, so it'll have to be the chip. OK, and uh, finally, over to Mr Jim Rosenthal. Your verdict on the game, did it live up to its expectations? It, it did. Um, I normally can't tip rubbish, but uh, we tipped Richard before the final, and he gave Chris, I'd have to say, a lesson in finishing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr Rosenthal, I can't thank you enough. It's been an honour to be, to be compensating with you, sir. Chris, thank you very much for coming on. But the real thanks must go to the 1996-97 season Games Master Football Tournament winner, Mr. Richard Rufus! So, Chris Armstrong trundles off empty-handed, but Richard Rufus trundles back to Charlton. Let's have a look at today's feature. With hits like Ridge Racer and Tekken under their pants, Japanese software Supremo's Namco undoubtedly produced some of the best 32-bit games around. So when they sent us a large bribe to preview their latest PlayStation stuff, we said, oh, all right then. Rage Racer. No, not Rave Racer, which was Namco's follow-up to Ridge Racer, but Rage Racer. They obviously like the word. Out next February, it's an all-new driving game from the Flatbits Pfft, Give Me Steep Steep Hills School of Game Design. 13 cars to choose from, which you can even customise, but unfortunately, the choice of four tracks doesn't really compete with F117. Next up, in Namco's latest beat em up, a conversion of their arcade hit Soul Edge. Slightly faster than Tekken, the game has 10 characters wielding weapons bigger than mine. There's some superbly inventive ways of breaking bones as well that even Manchester youths don't know about. A new weapon select option allows players to tool up with two foppers at once, while others will go for the more direct approach. Soul Edge is released next March. Last to be released, the long-awaited conversion of Namco's answer to Virtua Cop, Time Crisis. Only 50% complete, like myself, this preview version shows it's lost nothing in the translation. The good news is that all the original's 12 stages are in there, plus a completely new area. And if you were wondering, a second button on the gun that comes with the game replaces the arcade pedal to provide the dodge function. Time Crisis is out next April and should be Junglist Massive! OK, that's it for another show. Next week sees our Christmas special. We haven't recorded it yet. It might be fantastic. It might be pants. The only way that you will find out is if you tune in. And while you're uh, considering that, I will give you another question to toss over in your little minds. If video games make small children violent, why is it only grown men who go off to war? Good night.